PKI, or Public Key Infrastructure, is defined as a framework for managing digital certificates, encryption keys, and everything in between. It's the most important term in the cybersecurity world. Let's take a closer look at it to understand why. In this video, we'll take a look at the basics of public key cryptography, how it works, and the role digital certificates play in enabling PKI. The primary role of PKI is to establish identity and encrypt data flowing across the network, thus protecting sensitive information from being accessed by unauthorized parties. Public key cryptography is the system that makes this possible. It does so by employing a two-key system that makes it possible for both parties to verify each other's identities and then establish an encrypted connection between each other. You'll understand this better with an example. Assume you're trying to connect to a website from your computer. What actually happens here is your browser attempts to establish a connection with the web server that hosts the website. However, your browser must first verify the authenticity of the web server to ensure that the website is truly what it claims to be. After all, you don't want to end up on an illegitimate copy of a website that could end up stealing your personal information. The authentication process relies on asymmetric encryption, which is where the two-key system comes into play. Any entity on the network which leverages encryption possesses a public key and a private key. You can think of a key as an encryption tool, something that transforms plain text to ciphers and vice versa. In the case of asymmetric encryption, anything encrypted using a public key can only be decrypted with the corresponding private key and not with a copy of the same public key. Let's take a look at how they work in our browser web server example. First, your browser requests the server to present its public key. Public key information is accessible online and is not secret. The server complies by sending the browser a copy of its public key, and the browser uses it to encrypt a temporary session key, which it sends back to the server. Now, if the web server is legitimate, it will possess a secret private key that corresponds to its public key, which can be used to decrypt the session key. Once it informs the browser that it has succeeded in doing so, the browser takes it as a confirmation that it is legitimate and opens up an encrypted communication channel with it. This entire process ensures that any unauthorized third party cannot intercept this communication channel without possessing the designated keys. However, there's a loophole in the system. What if a hacker was masquerading as the web server after somehow obtaining its public and private keys? Your browser would be incapable of verifying ownership of the initial private key transaction without some additional information to do so. This additional information is what digital certificates provide. Digital certificates, also called SSL, TLS certificates, are proof that an entity is the legal owner of its encryption keys. They're issued by trusted bodies called certificate authorities, or CAs, which are responsible for generating, digitally signing, and selling certificates to a requester after verifying its legitimacy. CAs take particular care to verify that the requester is the legitimate owner of the domain for which a certificate is being requested. Only then does it provide them with a signed certificate that can be attached to their public key. Now, how does this fit into our browser server example? When your browser requests the web server to produce its public key, the server will also send the certificate that possesses the CA's digital signature, along with other details that will allow the browser to confirm that it is actually transacting with the web server. Thus, the digital certificate serves to legitimize the entire transaction from the get-go, thus establishing full trust and credibility in both parties. In fact, any website that lacks a certificate is immediately flagged as suspicious by most browsers, which results in the infamous SSL certificate error that stops people from accessing the website. To summarize, everything we discussed so far from asymmetric encryption to keys to digital certificates constitutes what is known as PKI. Did you find this video useful? Tell us what you'd like to learn about next in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to AppViewX for more videos 